Ito clocked out of the Parc Ferme, many felt that the Castrol Rally had already reached its conclusion. This despite some fierce competition and two full days of rallying ahead. Day two consists of 16 stages in the Usutu forests of western Swaziland. The road surfaces make for excellent rallying conditions and Surge sets about exploiting them. Acting wingman to the leading team, Enzo and Johan keep up the pace, determined to keep their seven minutes and second position secure. With Havoc's golf under repair, Baragwanath and Rila take up third spot on the road. A minute and 45 seconds behind Peter Baragwanath, the Audi still sounding strong. His approach to the splash, however, a disappointment for the crowd. Seemingly slow, but ever consistent, the efforts of Satvan Singh in the turbo-powered Celica, keeping the team in sixth place overall. Picking up penalties for lateness, Havoc overdoes things in this stage, damaging the rear suspension and adding to his frustrations. Yanni goes on to win four of the first eight stages, but the morning session belongs to Serge and Vito, who we join in car for a ride on stage 18. Looking down the field to 8th place where Chart van der Valt leads Class D from Terry Brand by almost two minutes. The Natal team of Tony Ball and Tony Babb unchallenged in Class B, but they retire in the very next stage after rolling their golf. Doing extremely well in the X-Factory Golf Synchro are Elicio Miranda with Tony Villaca Thomas navigating. In 10th place and leading Class C, the husband and wife team of Skulk and Sue Berger. <laughs> Terry Brand and Jeff Tyra chasing Class D honors. <laughs> Etienne Lawrence and Robert Paisley going extremely well despite this overshoot on stage 18. back from the forests to the Eselwini Valley for a regroup and well-earned break, Serge and Enzo have survived the first eight stages without incident and, by all accounts, have the 22nd Castrol International Rally in the bag. But the rally has only just reached the halfway mark, with 17 tough stages still remaining. In third place, the Italians are scoring consistent stage times, and behind them, a very determined Yanni Habeck has started to make a charge from his lowly eighth place on the scoreboard. Can Havoc pull off this Castrol? Don't go away, because we'll be back with more Castrol Rally action. Using every second of the allowed service time in an effort to get the Synchro shipshape. A new gearbox replaces the old in an effort to keep the Golf competitive for the eight remaining stages of day two. Before re-entering the forests, the competitors tackle a stage in the pineapple fields on the banks of the Usutu River. With the Toyotas out in front and the Audi in a comfortable third spot, the scoreboard action looks to the fight for fourth place. Satvan Singh and Richard Leake currently hold fourth position in the four-wheel drive Toyota Celica. On the same minute, but 30 seconds behind the Toyota, Chuck van der Waltz and Jaco van der Linde attack that gap with obvious determination. Uh, 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 
Skulk and Sue Berger are also in the fray, with only a minute separating them from the Class D Golf. Elicio Miranda has steadily worked the Golf Synchro up the scoreboard, while its sister car, now in the hands of Yanni Havik, continues to charge. Havik winning this stage ahead of Enzo Kuhn and Serge Damso in their conquests. Well behind on time, but still part of the action, Peter Baraguanas keeps the Nissan Sentra in ninth place overall. Lawrence and Paisley filling 10th spot in the Class C Conquest RSI. As the sun sets on the second day of the 1993 Castrol International Rally, very little has changed. The domination by Toyota continues as the event looks more and more like a one-horse race. But despite this, the Toyota dedication continues from stage to stage, the two conquests never lacking attention. The Audi team have settled into their third place slot, realizing that full points for the African Championship are safe for the moment, and chasing the Toyotas would be impossible. On a long 36-kilometer stage, disaster strikes. Stuck in the darkness of the Usutu forests, Serge Damso and Vito Bonafide fail to emerge from the section. Enzo and Johan arrive for their service, and as the time ticks by, become the new leaders of the Castrol Rally. Serge gets the conquest out. 20 minutes have elapsed, and the crew are now well down on the scoreboard. The injection system is repaired, and the team continue, but are later excluded from the event for having received outside assistance in getting fuel to the car and the car out of the stage. On the last stage of the day, Enzo slides off the road and is unable to continue, eventually time-barred out of the rally. Anthony's on his way towards you now, Nick. And Enzo? Uh, stuck in the mud. Uh, can't start the engine, and now, obviously, with the lights on, the battery's gone flat. You can't start it at all now. So, major disappointment for Toyota, as both cars remain alone in the park farm on dawn of the third and final day of the event. Aldo Riva and Enrico Raveda now lead the Castor Rally, ahead of Habak and Swanepoel, as the cars head east for the sugarcane fields around Mishlumi. Robert, you must be very pleased to have your car in first place. How do you see the rally going from here? Oh, I cross my, just cross my finger because uh, it's a long way again to do. And we have some very long stage, 140k stage. So I <laughs> just Crossing wait and fingers. see. Yes. Habach makes a minute on the first stage of the day, but early morning mist over the cane fields suits the Audi and the pace notes they're working on. Just a few stages later, and the gap widens once again. Well, we're about five, six minutes behind the chap in front of us, and on this last stage, we've just managed to take off almost a minute, so uh, we'll push it for another three or four stages, and if nothing goes wrong, we might make it. Now, they're going for the African Championship. You obviously want a Castrol victory because you obviously score points in the South African Championship for that. Does that play any part in this? Not really. You know, the real objective is obviously to win, and that's what we're trying to do. The battle between Singh and Miranda continues for fourth place, the Burgers having snatched third place the previous night by just five seconds. Skulk and Sue take extra service time and drop back on the road and on the score charts. Slightly overdoing things in the big league and outmatched on power by the bigger cars, the Class D Golf of Chart van der Valt still bravely fighting off the challenges of Peter Baraguanas as the rally heads for the Umschlumi Country Club Regal. At the break, the Audi still leads Habach by roughly nine minutes. Alicio and Tony in the second Golf Synchro have moved into third place ahead of Santvan Singh and Richard Leek. The Burgers then lead the Van der Valt Class D Golf. Habach's car is literally falling apart at the seams, and welding braces into the fractures is all that keeps the car on the road. 
The final Park Frelm control for the final time. The Italian Audi team have just five stages to finish and in so doing will become the first complete overseas team to win the Castrol Rally. Peter Baraguanath caused a few anxious moments for the spectators on stage 35 when he chose the wrong side of the canal. Most jumped for cover, but others found the incident most amusing. Yanni Havok's Golf was not the only car needing attention along the road. Skulk Berger was finding the going tough with both suspension and gearbox problems. The only car that hardly saw the angry side of a spanner was the Audi Coupe S2. Besides fuel and the odd body repair, the car growled around the stages without showing any fatigue. And it was that steady strength that saw the car through to the final stage of the 1993 Castrol International Rally. Battered, but there in his hard-fought second place, Yanni Havoc and Pete Swanepoel taking full points for the South African Rally Championship. Elicio held off Satvan by a slim 15 seconds, taking third place in an event that had become an all-privateer affair among the surviving South African entries. As the Audi Sport Europa team completed the final stage, we spoke to team manager Roberto Gramignani. Last year was a good rally. This year, I think, is a perfect rally. And I really astonished because in Europe, uh, uh, Many, many of the World Championship events are not so well organized. So I must congratulate also the organizers, the marshals and everybody. We are really very happy because we catch points for Group A. I told you before, our goal is Group A, but we could also win. So it's a very, very nice day for us. The final results speak volumes for those who managed to keep their names on the list, a truly enduring event that saw the big guns fall by the wayside and the privateers shine through.